If you're still waiting for your Sheen package and wonder why it's taking so long, well, there's a strong reason behind it. The Panama Canal. A cornerstone of global trade for over a hundred years is now facing an unexpected crisis. It's running out of water. This isn't just a local issue. It's a worldwide economic emergency. With billions of dollars in trade and nearly half of U.S. sea freight relying on this canal, the impact is enormous. Ships must choose between taking a long, costly detour, paying high fees for priority passage, or waiting for extended periods. The effects of this crisis are being felt across the globe. But what's causing this? The answer lies in a modern-day enemy, climate change. Over the last decade, the canal has been getting less and less rain, and the situation is only getting worse. One major factor is El Niño, a climate pattern that warms sea temperatures in the central and eastern Pacific Ocean. This change disrupts normal weather patterns, leading to severe droughts in some areas and heavy rainfall in others. Keep watching and explore the roots of this water crisis, the science behind it, and what the future might hold for the Panama Canal and global trade. In the Panama region, El Niño has been particularly detrimental. The phenomenon typically reduces rainfall during the rainy season, which is crucial for replenishing the freshwater lakes that supply the canal's locks. The 2015 El Niño was one of the strongest on record, causing the driest rainy season in over a century. Climatologists warn that as global temperatures rise, El Niño events are likely to become more frequent and intense, further jeopardizing the canal's water supply. A comprehensive plan exists to address this issue. But the question remains, will it be implemented in time to prevent droughts from derailing the global supply chain and crippling Panama's economy? The importance of the Panama Canal to the global supply chain cannot be overstated. This 82-kilometer passageway facilitates 6% of the world's maritime trade. The canal significantly shortens what would otherwise be a 20,000-kilometer journey around one of the world's most perilous waters. Looking at it on a map, it seems perfectly logical to create a canal here. But the ground conditions made building it anything but straightforward. Its ingenious design was only arrived at after a disastrous failed attempt that claimed the lives of tens of thousands of workers and destroyed the careers of two of France's most famous engineers. The initial attempt to construct the canal was marred by tragedy and failure. In 1869, Ferdinand de Lesseps, who gained fame for his work on the Suez Canal, embarked on a new project in Panama. He envisioned a sea-level canal similar to the one in Egypt. However, Panama's challenging terrain and tropical climate presented unforeseen difficulties. Dense jungles, unstable clay soil, and rampant diseases like malaria and yellow fever decimated the workforce. Over eight years, the project consumed 280 million U.S. dollars and claimed 22,000 lives, leading to financial ruin and scandal in France. The U.S. resurrected the project in 1904 with a different approach. Instead of a sea-level canal, they designed a lock-based system to raise and lower ships over the terrain. This ingenious solution included the construction of the world's largest dam at that time, forming Gatun Lake and a series of locks that lifted ships 26 meters above sea level. Completed in 1914, this version of the canal was hailed as a monumental achievement, underscoring the United States' industrial prowess and strategic acumen. Since its opening, the canal has been crucial to global trade. In 2010, the one millionth ship passed through its locks. Despite its historic success, the Panama Canal now faces severe challenges. The massive drought has forced the authorities to declare a state of emergency and restrict the size of ships passing through. The canal's design, which requires vast amounts of fresh water for its lock operations, has become a significant vulnerability. Each transit consumes approximately 200 million liters of water, a resource that is becoming increasingly scarce. In 2023, the canal experienced its longest dry spell since records began. The number of ships passing daily was cut from 40 to 24 by November, creating a backlog of 160 vessels. 
This congestion is exacerbated by the largest class of ships, the Neopanamax containers, which must reduce their cargo by 40% to navigate the shallow waters. The situation is dire, with shipping companies resorting to costly auctions for priority passage, driving transit fees to astronomical levels. In response to the crisis, engineers have proposed several solutions. The most promising plan involves creating a new reservoir by damming the Indio River and constructing an 8-kilometer tunnel to supply fresh water to Lake Gatun. This initiative, first conceived in the late 1990s, has gained renewed urgency. However, implementing this plan requires overturning a 2006 law that prohibits new reservoirs, a process that promises to be contentious. As Panama grapples with its water crisis, other countries are considering alternatives. Nicaragua, in partnership with Belarus, has revisited plans for a rival canal. Florida-based Zergatran is developing a project to build a 130-kilometer tunnel in Colombia, utilizing maglev trains to transport shipping containers. Meanwhile, Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor, a 300-kilometer freight and passenger route, is already under construction and could offer a viable alternative to the Panama Canal. The future of the Panama Canal and global trade hangs in the balance. Whether the canal can overcome its water shortage and maintain its pivotal role in the global supply chain is uncertain.